The racing world is in mourning today after a horrific 15-car crash left two-time two -time Indianapolis 500 winner Dan Weldon dead. Driver Paul Tracy, the second car spotlighted here, was involved in the tra tragic crash. Uh, Dan is joining us now. Uh, Dan, first of all, my heart goes out to you. Deepest condolences to everyone uh, who knew Dan Weldon. Uh, tell us what happened uh, based on your eyewitness personal recollection. Well, Wolf, it was just, uh, you know, obviously it's it's a tough day today for all of the auto racing world. Was, uh, this is something that uh, you never want to happen, but uh, the dangers are, are always out there. And it's uh, our condolences are to Dan and his family and his wife and kids. You know, it was just a situation where the cars were, it was early in the race. The cars were running at speeds of 225 miles an hour. We were in a tight group, a pack of cars, and just up in front of me, I saw uh, two cars had touched wheels, and uh, the one one car started to fishtail and slide sideways. And then I was trying to slow up and got on the brakes, and then from there it was just it was just carnage. I I, I got into the back of another car, another car flew over top of me, and from that point on, all I could really see was fire and parts flying and smoke and uh, when it all came to a stop it, it it looked like a something out of a movie set of days of thunder or uh, it just didn't seem real and uh, instantly we we knew that uh, Dan was was in in a bad way and the emergency crew was there and and right on top of him and you know myself and a couple of other drivers were were helping other drivers to get out of their cars that were kind of stuck because uh, the open wheel cars are very small and, and hard to get out of once, you, once you're in it. So it was just, uh, just a bad day. When, when you had some of those cars flying over you and you saw all the flames, did you ever think it was over for you as well? Well, I mean, it's, you, you never think of that, uh, that thing. Uh, obviously, when you sit back and, and look at it now, I mean, you know, I've had a long career. I've been racing. Uh, over 20 years now in, in Indy cars, and uh, my wife has just said to me last night, I mean, y you got enough trophies and we have enough money. Is, do we really need to do this anymore? And after seeing one of your friends die and, and you know, knowing the family, and, you know, that's, uh, that's the question mark that I have to answer for myself. And, you know, obviously Dan's legacy as a champion and an Indy 500 champion twice, uh, I think, you know, this is a huge tragedy uh, for IndyCar, but I hope that out of this tragedy comes comes some good in terms of uh, improving uh, more in safety, uh, like when Greg Moore died and Dale Earnhardt Sr. and and now uh, Dan Weldon, that the innovations that come about from that in terms of improving the driver's safety it, uh, needs to be kicked up another notch. So we hope that that's what will happen. So what about you? What, what do you think you're doing in a race again, or you think it's over? It's time to to retire. I don't know. That I mean, I, I, that's something I need to think about. Obviously, my wife would like to me like she wants me to retire. My uh, my mom and dad have called out to me and said, "Hey, you've raced uh, 20 years. Uh, I need a couple of days to digest." Obviously, it's uh, I have been only been racing the past three or four years part time. Um, I've kind of been been there, seen it all, done it all, and uh, what happened on Sunday was not a great thing that uh, that I want to see. It's the first time I've seen that firsthand in my career, and not something I want to see again. But you know, ultimately, as a race driver, you know what the risks are when you go out there. It's you know, Mario Andretti said to the drivers yesterday, "Look, if you think this is uh, this business you got into is safe, then." You're in the wrong sport. We we know what the risks are. We know that there's danger. Uh, we're all thrill seekers at heart. We all take risks on the racetrack. We, you know, this sport isn't for everybody. Uh, you know, obviously, it's uh, we'd like to see improvement. I think there can be improvement made uh, in the catch fencing. There's been so much improvement done with safer walls and uh, head and neck restraint systems, and the seats and the cars have gotten safer and safer. But what has really stayed the same is the catch fencing along the walls has really stayed the same over the past hundred years. And 
uh, you know, my thoughts are is why can't we have some type of ballistic type of uh, plexiglass or safety glass that would, you know, still allow the fans to see the racetrack but would keep cars from getting tangled in the in the fencing like a like a web like a like a spider web when once the cars get in there it just starts ripping the cars apart so you know maybe that's the next thing that uh, needs to happen in terms of uh, safety for for race events as you know Paul as as you know Paul uh, the uh, there's been a lot of questioning now over the past 24 hours whether this track this racing track in Las Vegas was really big enough safe enough a lot smaller than indianapolis as you well know well looking back and all of us are obviously smarter with hindsight was it safe for the number of cars uh, and the size of this track given what was going on well i mean it's hard to say obviously the las vegas motor speedway is a world-class facility uh, i've been a resident of las vegas uh, for the past 15 years i've just recently moved and i uh, i saw the track be built it's a world-class facility uh, it's no different than any other racing track around the world uh, uh, has the same type of walls uh, fencing system uh, as any other racetrack and you know really this is just a uh, a factor of uh, you know you've got a lot of cars racing in close quarters uh, the Indy cars now we've we you know they've spec the cars to where they want the cars to run a bit more in a pack like NASCAR and uh, these cars are not designed really to to run and bounce bang wheels with each other at 225 miles an hour our wheels are exposed uh, NASCARs are closed body cars like a street car so you know once uh, once you have two cars touch each other uh, there's really you you don't have any control of, of what what can happen so you know we need to look at what uh, the future is we have a new car coming in 2012 that we will hope stops the cars from interlocking wheels. They've kind of closed in the wheels and built some body work around the wheels. Uh, but my concern really now is, uh, you know, the fencing, I think, is the problem with, with motorsports. You see stock cars uh, fly and get up in the air when they get backwards and they get into the fencing and the cars just kind of get ripped apart. And it's, it's very much the same uh, for Indy cars. So uh, my thoughts are, you know, I think the cars right now are pretty safe, but I think the next thing needs to be done to, to the fencing. Good point. Uh, finally, uh, uh, Paul, tell us something about Dan Weldon that you'd like to share at this very sad moment with all of our viewers here in the United States and around the world. Well, Dan was just a guy who loved life. I mean, uh, you know, I've never saw Dan in, in the 10 years that I knew him without a smile on his face without a twinkle in his eye, uh, whether he had a good day on the racetrack or a bad day. You know, this, this season for him was, was only a part-time season. He'd lost his ride, lost his sponsor, and was, you know, around the track trying to find himself a ride, always smiling, always talking to everybody, meeting with the fans, and never upset about it, never bitter about it. Uh, picked himself up an Indy 500 ride this year and won the biggest race in the world. and. You know, we, that's the highest of highs that you can have, and, and yesterday was the lowest of lows. But, you know, what we can remember of Dan is, was a guy who just loved life and loved being a race driver. Paul Tracy, thanks very much for sharing some thoughts uh, with us about Dan Weldon and the tragedy that occurred here in Las Vegas. Appreciate it very, very much. And once again, our Thank deepest you. condolences to Dan Weldon's uh, beautiful family and all of, the, all of his friends as well. We'll take a quick break, more of the news from Las Vegas, right after this.